Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. Hey, tonight it's all coming down. The last chance for our robots to do what they do best. Fight! All out, no holes barred, extreme action all the way. They're up for it. I'm up for it. Are you guys up for it? <laughs> then let's make this a night to remember. In your nightmares. Because tonight, it's our All-Stars Grand Final! <laughs> and as tournaments go, they don't come much more... brutal. Craig, plenty of battles leading up to our all-star final, our vengeance, crunch, Thermidor and Napalm. That's a grudge match. Followed by the challenge belt. Can Tornado hold on to it under the challenge of Pussycat? Then we've got a nest of ants. Pants, Little Nipper, Ant TV, Combat Ant, Legion, Razzler and Anto. All together in a melee. The UK against Germany. Hit and disc for the UK. Nasty warrior for the Germans. And our main event, it is the All-Stars Final, the best of the best, Razor against Tornado! And the road to our All-Star Final started with Chaos beating Exterminator in the first of our All-Star Qualifiers. The reigning British champions have become early favourites. Deator were next up against Wheelie Big Cheese. The Cheese grated, the fur flew. And the Irish boys were sent back to Dublin in double quick time. Next, a surprise as Panic Attack was lifted and slammed by Firestorm. As the crowd called out for more, another shot. The mighty Behemoth blunted the whirling dervish that is Hypnotis to make it into the quarterfinals. Thing had too much movement, guile and design for Dominator 2, whose axe didn't cause enough damage, I'm afraid. Now we had Tornado taking giant strides against three stakes to heaven. The pushability factor very high. Now Gemini can cause double trouble, but not against the claw of Razor. Once that gets hold of you, it can turn out to be a crushing victory. Into the quarterfinals, and Chaos 2 showed why it's British champion. Wheelie Big Cheese became flipped, whipped, fondue. Would George Francis win this competition as well with the Chaos? Storm on Wild Thing looked well matched on paper. The Storm on the attack though from the start and it never finished pounding and eventually rounding things off into the pit. If that looks impressive, look at Razor's performance in the semi-final. Toying with Firestorm, strutting as the Storm flapped like a fish on a hook. Razor Sharp through to the final. There to meet Chaos 2 or Tornado, and here one of the biggest shocks in Robot Wars history. The champs shoved around, bullied, sand kicked in their face. So in the All-Stars final, it's Razor against Tornado. So, Razor versus Tornado. And trust me, trust me, everyone wanted to get their hands on the All-Stars trophy. So expect a rumble to end all rumbles. But I'll tell you what, news just in, Julia's got a bit of a situation in the pits. Now, there's a rumour in the pits that Thermidor have said that Robot Wars is not a place for women. The women should be in the homes and not in the battle zone. I have to say, I totally disagree. And Napalm naturally disagree. Don't you, Vicky? We do indeed. How do you feel about that sexist nonsense? Well, they clearly woke up in the wrong century. So what do we want, Napalm? Vengeance. Too right we do. 
Where's Claire? Claire, she's gone to have a private word with them already. Is she that upset? She is indeed. I'm not surprised. Thermidor, watch out. I'm coming to have words with you. Thermidor. What's that you've been saying that Robot Wars isn't a place for women? That's right. Um, girls are soft and they're nice, friendly. It's a it's a man's game, Robot Wars. Soft and friendly, you say? Yeah. You haven't met Vicky. I can assure you, we need them. Soft and not nice. We're also better drivers than you. We're better technicians. And we do more know. than one thing at once. Yeah. And we don't have something else in the brain every six seconds. Well, we have to prove it then. Well, I think we shall. Shall we not, Vicky? We will indeed. This is one battle of the sexes that will have to be sorted out in the war zone. From Costasy, Norwich, Norfolk, Thermidor 2. Very impressive in extreme so far with a powerful pneumatic flipper and the claws. Watch out though for that fragile shell. We're Team Lobster, my name's Dave, this is Ian, this is our robot Thermidor 2. We're angry, we're ready for a fight, keep out of our way. From New Ash Green, Napalm. Teenagers Vic Yorga, Claire Greenaway and teacher David Crosby, a James Bond fan, have this heavily armoured napalm machine, but it's unreliable, you know. Good evening from Dave, Claire and Vicky and Napalm back for another war. In the war zone for us, the weapon synergy of dead metal, heavy at 112 kilos. Slightly lighter, but no less deadly, Matilda. Roboteers, stand by. David and Vicky fighting Three, for women's honor. <laughs> Napalm against Thermidor, who believe the Napalm team should be back in the kitchen. A broiling lobster, perhaps. And it's the lobster at this moment in time, reaching boiling point. Thermidor with David Harding and Ian Harvey. Look at this. Slam, bam, and uh, thank you, ma'am. Napalm, can they come back from that? David to the controls. Vicky seems to love it. They do. But what about Napalm? Lost in the air. Comes crumpling down. Still on an old pram frame, it looks like with the two fangs at the back and, well, very little else, really, at this moment in time. It's been crushed, pushed and slammed. It's already in tatters. It's almost in shreds. Dead metal's in there. David, you've got to do something there. A James Bond feat is needed because time is ticking out. And Thermidor... Their argument that you should stay in the kitchen is right. You shouldn't be in the arena. You're out of it now. Cease. I'm afraid all napalm is worth now. Scrap for pots and pans on that stove. Get back to the kitchen and start cooking up another machine. Well, Napalm unceremoniously dumped out of the arena. The winners are Thermidor 2. Come on, guys. They reckon that girls were kind of no good at building robots and Robot Wars was no place for girls, isn't it? And... I was going to say that they've gone a long way to prove it, but they haven't really, because it's his fault, really, isn't it? It's my fault, I'm afraid, It's yeah. your robot. It's my robot. The and girls built it, but then, unfortunately, Killerlock destroyed it last time. Yeah. And the only reason she went out last time was we took three robots to destroy it. Yeah. But this time, I built it with cable ties and sellotape. So, so it's not really your fault. I no. think, although you won this fight, I think you've got some apologising to do, really, uh, haven't you? We have had time to reconsider, yes. Yeah, so yeah. 
they were very brave to show on. The, yeah. the driving was good at the start. Yeah. So. And Robot Wars is a place for girls, isn't it? It is. And yeah. you're sorry you said that, aren't we're, you? We're very sorry. OK, yeah. so you won the vengeance, but you still feel a little bit of humility now, don't you? That's right. OK, it's been a very sobering experience <laughs> for you, isn't it? I hope we can still be friends. OK. Let's go ballistic for Thermidor 2. By the end of tonight, we'll have found ourselves an All-Stars Supreme Champion! Either Razor or Tornado. And the fight may be some time away, but the fighting talk's already started. Well, the big fight we're gearing up to tonight is the All-Star Final. Razor, you saw what Tornado did to Chaos 2 in the previous fight. Has that shaken you up a little bit? Well, they're pretty fast and pretty good, those guys. But um, I think our way is going to be that we're going to nail them pretty fast. We're going to get right on them. Are you as confident as that? Yeah, we're padding stuff out, make sure things don't move, because they can hit us hard, but we're not going to let them. Have you got a message for the opposition? Yeah, definitely. Tornado. You may have done well so far, but now you're up against the real weapon. <laughs> that is going to be a fight worth sticking around for. Well, we've settled one score tonight, but the action doesn't stop here. Especially as Julia's got some shock news for our All-Stars finalists. Tornado. Well, I found Tornado in the pits, and team, I have something to tell you. Pussycat have challenged you for the belt. Now, this puts you guys in a real dilemma, doesn't it? Because if you accept the challenge, you're in danger of really mashing up the robot for the All-Star Final with Razor. But if you don't accept the challenge, you lose the belt and they win it by default. It is a tough one, but you haven't got long to decide. What's your gut feeling? What do you think, guys? Um, do we take we, the risk? We've taken them on once before. I think we take the risk. Yeah? Yeah, we've beaten them once. We've Unanimous them decision. It'd be nice to hold on to the belt. So, yes, yeah. come on, team. That's the fighting spirit that we love on Extreme. Let's get them to the arena. From Huntingdon, in Cambridgeshire, Tornado. They hold one challenge belt outright for all time. They're defending the second with a 2,000 RPM spinning disc. Can run each way up. It's invertible. From Gloucester, Pussycat. The cat's litter. Anything chewed up by the patented pussycat blade, agile as a cat, and at 14 miles an hour, speedy too. OK, Team Tornado, you defended the challenge belt three times now, but you've got some real opposition. Put your dukes up, boy, you're going down. Roboteers, stand by. That's the pussycat team. Alan and David Gribble, Robert Bettington with them. Facing... Our machines in the arena, dead metal with the pincers and the saw. And Matilda with the tough skeleton, the tusks, the flywheel. Three, two, one, two, eight. Pussycat from the right hand side. Look at that great spinning disc. Tornado has a smaller one at the front, but no less effective. And it has the power, and it has the drive, and it has the driving ambition to win this one. Hold on to the belt with minimal damage, because it has the all-star final up and coming. That's the major mission for Tornado. If they win this one, it will be a second victory with this second challenge belt. You get to keep it out right with three wins. Look there at the Tornado 15 kilo spinning disc at the front of the machine as well. It has a low centre of gravity. It has this power and push and top speed of 10 miles an hour. Both machines 97 kilos. And did the Pussycat chew something up there on the front of Tornado? I don't think so. There's a slam from Tornado. The Pussycat against the arena side wall and of course they're in. Cannot get the circular saw to work. Now the blade can work. Stops momentarily though. The Pussycat Blade, driven by a David Dribble. Dan Allen built this Pussycat machine. Up on top there of Tornado and into the CPZ and almost on top of Matilda. Comes down with a bump. The blade starts rotating again. 
So does Matilda. It's a great, hugely weighted flywheel. Pussycat in trouble. Tornado again pushes it back in towards Matilda. Look at that additional weapon for Robot Wars Extreme. On the back of Matilda, Pussycat needs to get out of there and there. Saw blade to saw blade at this moment in time. The metal sparks and flies in slivers across the arena floor and splinters of metal and tornadoes away. And the pit release button has been fully depressed and the pit is down and Pussycat circles away and tornadoes on the left. But will the holders of the challenge not go down? No, they don't, but Pussycat seems poised. At this moment in time, it's a cat with nine lives and it's eaten up just about eight of them, I would say. Tornado, one of the most all-round robots we've seen in Robot Wars Extreme. And they'll go very well in the British Championships, I'm sure. If they continue form like this, and Pussycat is tottering, and they're in. That's the ninth flight gone. And the Tornado Boys hold on to the belt. Oh, yes. What a fantastic fight. The winners and still holders of the Extreme Challenge belt. Let's hear it for Tornado! You thought you could have them. You knew they were vulnerable. They've got a fight razor later on this evening. You thought, this is our chance. They've taken your trousers down a couple of times now. Yeah, well, we knew we could have them, but we didn't plan on fighting the Earth robots as well. You know? Oh, hey. it was Come them. On. Come on. It was them. They battered you. Uh, these guys were going down. Oh. I mean, they were, <laughs> they were cruising for a bruising, and we were going to give it to them if I'm for that sissy Matilda. A tornado pushed you into Matilda. Nah. It's all tactics, man. It's all we, tactics. We were moving strategic. And even Matilda wasn't <laughs> even Matilda wasn't trying to do that much damage. Her wheel was flying really slowly. She no, trying to no, help no, you out. No, no, she wasn't. She, uh, she, 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 she's, she's this a is not gracious in defeat. <laughs> this is it? No, hey? no, no, hey? no. You you have used up your your nine lives. You are the weakest link. No, Thank we... you. Bye bye. Right. <laughs> tornado, yes. <laughs> You've got one belt that you're keeping. This is your second defence of this one. You can end up with, with two belts. <laughs> well, what, are you what can about, we say? What are you thinking about later on, though? We don't want to be greedy, but if there's no more challenges, what can we do? Your mantle piece will be very full. Very, <laughs> you've got, you've got, we've got, we've got it. In the next wars, we're going to have to do it again because you've, 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 you've each got to get a belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, well your robot is turning into a formidable machine. I think it's probably one of the, the most improved robots that we've had on the wars. Yeah, we fixed all the problems that we had and it, it goes well now. It goes well and it goes hard and it just <laughs> keeps going on and on and on. You're going to adapt it at all? Do you think you're going to give it like a weapon, that, you know, like a you know, a noticeable kind of weapon? <laughs> what do you mean, give it like a an axe or something it's like got that? A weapon. I know, but I want an axe on it. We get an axe on it. We can't use an axe each way out. No. It has to be something we can use each way out. True, yeah. true. It works. And it works because every time you're flipped over, you can just ride off into the distance again, can't you? Yeah. Well, these guys have been in the eye of the whirlwind. These guys have sampled the force of the tornado. Let's hear it. The Extreme Challenge champions, Tornado! <laughs> of old grudges, nowhere are the passions running as high as in our All-Stars final. Razor versus Tornado. Wow. I know who I think's going to win, but what do they think in the pits? Razor's going to do it, no problem. I mean, they beat us, so they can easily beat Tornado. Well, my money is on Tornado. He's a different robot this year, and uh, Razor's been a bit lucky so far. Final between Razor and uh, Tornado, I think Razor's going to chew him up. Well, your man does have long hair in Tornado. Yeah. And one of the judges does like long hair. Which one is that? I don't know. Tornado? Yeah. So I think it's going to be chaos too. What do you reckon? Tornado, what do you reckon? Riser. If it doesn't break, break down. down. 
Yes, we're saving that awesome All-Stars final till what may well be the bitterest end we've seen. But to keep things rocking, let's go from one extreme to another. Julia, what is going on in the pits? Well, Craig, we have an exclusive just for Robot Wars Extreme. We have the ant weight competition. We're going to have seven mini robots in a melee, and they'll be fighting in this purpose-built arena, which has fully functional flipper and pit, I might add. I can't wait. Hi, I'm Craig, and this is Anto. We're team the ant weight competition. It's got a little lifter, it's going to throw everyone out of the arena. Hi, my name's Pete Collier, and I'm here for the ant weight battle. This is my robot pants, and as you can see, it's got a marvellous axe. It's going to do some serious damage. My name is Peter Waller, and this is my robot combat ant, and I'm here to compete in the Robot Wars ant weight competition. Basically, this is a wedge-shaped robot which can run up either way. It has a rotating metal uh, bladed weapon on the back, and it has special uh, sticky rubber tyres to give more grip. Hi, I'm Anthony, and this is my ant weight called anti -B. It has a flipper on it which can lift about 150 grams and it's also made out of titanium therefore indestructible. Hi I'm Richard and I'm Alex and this is Legion. We have a vicious flipper and it's the only cluster bot in Robot Wars. This is my Amway, he's a bit light, he's a uh, Razzler this is and he's got a terrible three grams of uh, crush underneath here. Awesome Antweight melee. Pants, Little Nipper, Anti-B, Combat Ant, Legion, Razzler and Anti... Who's going to win? I haven't got a clue. No idea whatsoever. It'll be fun though. Roboteers, stand by. I'll take it so seriously. There's Anthony Pritchard. Oh, and Ian Lewis as well with Razzler. Very quick Razzler as well. Top sort of left. There it is. Like a mini razor. Do you see it? Also raising the flag I saw in there. Anto. There's Ian Lewis at the controls of Razzler. Got a mini behemoth out there as well, and someone's got flying. <laughs> that has gone out of the arena completely. The mini arena. I think it was Pants that went flying out. Top right of your picture, you've got Combat Ant in there with Razzler. Combat Ant, oh, it's over the floor. Flip out, another one's caught it underneath. I think Anti P went in underneath the floor flipper. Have a look at it again. This was the moment Combat Ant flew, and Anti P went in underneath. You're out of it, Anthony Pritchard. How about that for driving skills? We've got a wheel come off as well. It's all happening out there under pressure from Combat Ant. Anto has lost a wheel. This is Little Nipper with Razzler onto the arena sidewall. Combat Ant again with a little. Well, a nervy nudge, wasn't it? Uh, we've still got the cluster bot out there as well. This is Razzler, though, to, to sort of uh, edge away at Combat Ant with the devilishly destructive beacon claw. Combat Ant pushes it away. <laughs> the arena sidewalk. Little Nipper goes up on the raised ramp. There's Legion. Part of Legion is still going top right. Oh, but Razzler's gone. Razzler's into the pit. Pushed down by Little Nipper. Ian Lewis is out. We've got Little Nipper there. We've got part of Legion. Oh, have we got part of Legion anymore? Spinning up into the air, I don't think so. Richard Thompson and Alex Timney. They flew away. It's now between Combat Ant and Little Nipper, I think. Although part of that cluster body is still fighting Legion. For me, Combat Ant moving to the left has been the more effective, but it's going to go for a judge's decision. Oh, and I forgot Anto's still alive, top left. Well, judges, you decide. I really have no idea. Well, that went to a judge's decision, and based on style, control, damage, and aggression, Peter and Combatant, you were the clear winner. That was absolute carnage. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was good fun, yes. <laughs> I had no idea something that small could do the amount of damage. Now, I reckon if we had a robot like that in the real wars, it would do pretty well. Yeah. Have you got a team taking part? I've got um, a heavyweight which isn't actually in this year, but I'm hoping to finish it off for next year. So that uh, is a spiked one rather than a rotating one. Though. But maybe I'm going to change my mind on that. But now, back to tonight's All-Star Final. Razor versus Tornado. Now, earlier, Razor were giving it all of that. But can Tornado whip up just as big a storm? In the pits, getting ready for the All-Star Final. Tornado team. 
Now, how confident can you be up against a robot like Razor? Well, they're very good. They uh, won the World Championship last year, so it's going to be a very hard fight, but we'll do our best. Is your confidence up after whooping Chaos 2's butt so beautifully to get here? It is indeed. I mean, we did very well to get this far, so uh, we're looking forward to this. See if we can go all the way. Well, team, good luck. And may the best bolt win. That all stars final is just minutes away. But get this, get this. The Germans are here. They say they're the best engineers in the world. And we're not having it. So, Julia, if a German robot wants a fight, who's going to gun for Britain? Well, Craig, for this Britain versus Germany grudge match, who better to represent the UK than Hypnodisc? And they will, of course, be up against the extreme team from Germany. Now, guys, this is a battle of engineering. So what is so special about your robot? Our robot is out of carbon, and we think it's the best one here in this fight. OK. Carbon, you say? Yeah. Just carbon. Just carbon. Hit the disc. They're made of carbon. Pencils are made of carbon, aren't they? Yeah. So not in the least bit intimidating, no, then? No, not at all. No, we get through pretty thick carbon, titanium, nothing will stop us. Mind you, they say that now, but with the all good works of engineering, it only takes the tiniest thing to go wrong, and the war is lost. From Germany, Nasty Warrior. Arrow style flat body, two 36 volt driven wheels, able to run both sides up. The outer skin is covered in carbon materials. The weapon's a lawnmower blade. Hello, we're the Extreme Team, and this is our robot Nasty Warrior. This is Norman, this is Marco, and I'm Jan. We're here to damage as much as we can. From Middleton Cheney, Hypno Disc. Created by the Rose family, they spin to win with their aluminium and mild steel shell. The big nasty disc has twice as much power than in the last series. Hi, I'm Dave Rose, team captain of Hypnotist. These are our team members, Derek and our father Ken. We made a number of improvements to this wars, the main one being a much more powerful weapon. It's so awesome, it's going to cause the ultimate disc destruction. Roboteers, stand by. And the house robots shunt with the axe, the scoop, the pushing power. And nasty, niggly, bad-tempered Matilda with a total lack of self-control. Hit notice coming from the left with a spinning disc, the darker features of Nasty Warrior. R.I.P. Rest in pieces, I think it's going to be. The roses mean to bloom. Look at this. Already, shards being ripped away from the extreme team from Karlsruhe. The nasty warrior machine. Oh dear, oh dear. He's taking terrible punishment. Carbon? It's made of carbon. Have a look at it. Underneath there. There's balsa wood, I'm sure. Carbon? A bit of plastic here. A bit of sellotape there. There's not going to be much left of it, I wouldn't have thought. Hypnotist again slams in. Another slice. He's been ripped to shreds, the German hope. Sad to see. Of course it is. Jan and Marco and Norman Tice. A jet of steam under Hypnodisc dances away. It's mesmerising. It's hypnotic, isn't it, if you stare at it long enough? The Germans come back on the attack, but tentatively so. I think they're just trying to stay out of trouble, to be honest. And it will be the Union Jack. Hoisted high over this battle. Nasty warrior. Trying to stay out of trouble, really. Took nine months and roughly 300 pounds to build. Nasty warrior with the lawnmower blade. We haven't even seen it yet, really. Being dragged across the arena floor by Hypnodisc, but is Hypnodisc now conked out? What's happened to Hypnodisc? Is it still manoeuvrable? Is it out of reach of Matilda? Is this going to be a stunning surprise? Is this going to be a German victory after all? The Rose of England is fading from its early bloom. It's getting some damage in late on. 
but I don't think it's moving a great deal. And had Nasty Warrior had any sort of weaponry at all, we might have had a shock here. <laughs> Look at that. Flapping around like a tongue. A piece of Nasty Warrior. What is that on the floor? Some part of the German machine. The disc's moving okay, but the rep one is unhappy because Hypnotisk is not being manoeuvred over the war zone floor and is being counted out. Nasty Warrior is still alive. And what a surprise. Hypnodisc is out and the Germans win it. That's a stunner. And they haven't won it on penalties. Well, a European friendly challenge. Hypnodisc, one of Britain's best robots, is immobilized. The winner in the Germans and Nasty Warrior! Congratulations. Congratulations. It was the Germans, lads. We're playing Germany. Oh no, oh no. At home. Hang our heads in shame. <laughs> We're playing Germany at home and look what you did to us. I think there were some uh, wooden splinters that got in one of the drive gears, and I think it's just really? seized, seized one side of it, yeah. Because um, the spinning disc was spinning well enough, but yeah. it, was like, it seemed like you were only spinning on half power very early on. Yeah. It kind of went up to maximum power towards the end, but you weren't going anywhere. Yeah, I'm not too sure up in there. It's going to be interesting to find out actually what went wrong. The Germans, it was, guys. Yeah. They're, they're, at they're, home. they're our jinx, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah, we know. You beat. That's one of Britain's best, best robots. Hey. What do you think about the standard of the British robots? Have you been. Oh, it's very high. Very high. What about, what about the, the German standard? Is it, are they on a par with England at the moment, or are they yeah, a bit behind? Yeah, they've got not enough. No, not enough experience. We've experience with this. And we have much to learn. Yeah. But we had much luck now. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't like to clean the floor now. You, no. No, no, you wouldn't want to clean the floor. I tell you what, guys, don't you boo them. Let's hear it for Nasty Warrior! <laughs> So, after more than 70 battles, Robot Wars Extreme has come down to this. The ultimate. The definitive test of skill, power and raw aggression. It's our All-Stars Grand Final. So, Juliet, are our All-Stars fighting fit? Yeah, we're ready to go. We're going to give it all. But Razor's a pretty tough robot, so we'll see how it goes. Good luck. Razor, you ready? You confident? Yeah, very, very ready indeed. Give well, it all we got. There's an arena waiting for you, teams. Good luck. This is the finale we've all been waiting for. Earlier we heard what their fellow All-Stars thought might happen in this one. But Jonathan, what are you expecting to happen, mate? Craig, it'll be. A hectic hurly-burly out there in the war zone as I spy down for my position here in the crow's nest. Tornado slightly heavier, can do damage with the disc if it hits Razor head on. But otherwise, this part bird, part reptile will get its beak through that welded steel to bash and break and really destroy. So I'm going to go for them. <laughs> This is it then. Time to find an all-star champion. Are you ready for it? Yeah! This is the final. I said, are you ready for it? Yeah! That's the business. And give it even louder for our first all-stars finalist, the mighty the world champion, the Razor! <laughs> and go absolutely berserk! Let's hear it for Tornado! The reigning world and international champions, crushability factor high. Good top speed, 11 miles an hour. 
but it broke down in the last series of Robot Wars. Hi, I'm Simon Scott, Captain Team Razor. I'm Ian Lewis, world-class driver. Vincent Blood, master tactician. The vertically mounted 2000 RPM 15 kilo spinning disc can whip up a storm, and this can push with the force of a hurricane. Hi, my name's Andrew Marchant. This is Brian Moss. This is David Gamble. We are Team Tornado. Roboteers, stand by. The final battle of Robot Wars Extreme has Sergeant Bash in the arena too, with the flamethrower and the pincers. And alongside our sergeant, taking his orders perhaps, shunt with the axe and the scoop, the pushing power, the electric motor. Three. Tornado from the right-hand side. Razor immediately, though, with a beak on the attack. Trying to penetrate the very shell of Tornado. Crumpling and grinding. Part beak, part bird, part reptile. The hole is deadly. The spinning wheels of Tornado try and gain some purchase. Until we hear a puncture, it will try and gain purchase. I'm not too sure if one of those tires has been punctured. But certainly, the machine shape has been crumpled, and to withstand that sort of punishment, Tornado must be a remarkable machine. But can they now launch any sort of counter-attack? Razor has them here. Clawed, beaked, pulled, torn, dropped. Tornado, what power is there on that left-hand side of the machine? We'll wait and see. Can get up to 10 miles an hour. Is it one-sided now? Lopsided. Tornado is not running freely. Once again, Razor on the attack in this All-Stars final. Simon Scott, Ian Lewis, the driver. Vinnie Blood there. Hard as cheek with that old beak. Into the tire, it plunges once again. Tornado, all of a sudden, is looking a tired out old thing there in the war zone in the arena. It cannot get away from Razor with the intense crushability. Two trolley shot caddy motors driving up to 11 miles an hour for Razor. Doesn't need to get up any speed because it has Tornado in its clutches. And poor old Andrew March and the driver of Tornado can do nothing against Simon Scott's team. It has been mightily effective in Robot Wars Extreme, but it has more than met its match against the world champions razor, the international champions razor. It's punctured now. The skin of Tornado trying to get through to the very motors in there now. The 36 volt motors of Tornado. There is no life in that machine. Axed by the house robot. The ref bot takes a cursory glance. Sergeant Bash awaits as well. Pit, 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 they cry. There's a lick of flame from the arena floor. Tornado, torch, scorn, burn, but not shame. There goes Razor. Onto the pit release button. You can see it flashing. See the pit descending. It's all over for Tornado. They'll end up in the pit ultimately, but after being counted out by the ref bot, Razor, worthy. Winners of our All-Stars final, worthy champions of Robot Wars Extreme, as all that is left to do is snuff out the tornado, dampen down the hurricane, quieten the whirlwind. We have put the wind up you, says Razor, and in the end, let's be honest, it wasn't even a close shave. Sergeant Bash and Shunt come in with the last right for a very brave, battling machine. Andrew March and David Gamble and Brian Moss can be proud. Tornado, of course, holders of the challenge belt. Beaten three stakes to heaven on their way through. Then the spiteful pussycat. The awesome chaos went as well in the semi-finals. But here, Tornado, ignominiously flipped from the arena floor. Bashes and crashes. Splintered. Hoax tattered. Boing, it came down. But there is no bounce left in Tornado. No bounce in the step. It is a long and steady and agonizing 
inch by inch, funereal procession towards the pit of oblivion. In comes Razor with a slight shove. Razor has the last word. Tornado has the last rights. The world champions and now the all-star champions. Let's hear it for the mighty Razor! Come on, lads! Come on, lads! You beat the British champions. Yep. But the world champions seemed a bit too much for you. What happened? Yeah. What went wrong? It all went wrong a bit too soon there, didn't it? They, they got a hold of us and that's it. It wouldn't let us go. Well, so, you see, uh... you've got protection round the sides. Yep. But the mighty claw comes in from the top, isn't it? And, and there's no protection there. there. No, no. They didn't let us go. We couldn't get out of there. So uh, we could have made it a bit more interesting maybe if they let us go. But at the end of the day, that was fair. So. But after beating Chaos too, you must have thought, hey, we're in with a chance to be the all-star champions here. We knew Razor was tough. Uh, we'd give, we gave everything we could, but once they got hold of us, they just didn't let us go. So there was nothing we could do. And it's powerful, that claw, isn't it? It is yeah. powerful. Very much so. Yeah. Anyway, all is fair in love and robot wars. Let's hear it! The gallant loses Tornado! <laughs> I know, because you always break down in the British yeah. Championship, yeah, but they win. <laughs> in the World we Championship won you won. Yeah. You're now the All-Star Champions. Yeah. Trophy number nine. Yeah. This has got to be a high point for you, though. I mean, this, I mean, Brilliant. there are some serious robots in this. Yeah. These guys were good. I mean, they put up some stiff opposition. We've seen they're very, very fast, so we knew we had to get a very, very quick grip on them. Yeah. And we hit the transmission. You know, pretty hard, so... But you were very tenacious, you know? oh, yeah. You're going for the wheels, it looked like you couldn't yeah, get the wheels. Well, we were going for the transmission. Yeah. Did you, you get it in the end? You got it well, in the end. I think we got it, it in just, the end, It just yeah. died, didn't it? Yeah. 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 And we honoured ourselves, you know, I mean, we backed off once they were dead, so... so we didn't go say, too crazy. Well, listen, Julia Reed has got you the Robot Wars Extreme All-Star Trophy. Julia, come here. Brilliant. Hand it to the mighty Razor. Thanks. Show the audience! The All-Star of All-Stars! On Robot Wars. Extreme. Extreme. Okay. Bye-bye. If Alexander Armstrong is Morecambe, then Richard is definitely his wise in Pointless next tonight here on Challenge. While over on Pick, it's brand new Monkey Life.